Hey guys, Zero One One here. How's it going? Um, I wanted to take a break from my usual, you know, Minecraft videos that I normally do and uh, work on some Diablo Three. So this is my seasonal character. We are in uh, patch two point four, so this is season five, I think. Um, and then I built this guy, and let's see, my picture here is gonna kind of be in the way, huh? <laughs> All right, so. Um, I'm using the Invoker set with the Crusader, so I've got uh, every single piece of the equipment here. Um, now my equipment isn't really all that great, I've got two ancient items and that's it. Um, but uh, it is important to uh, make sure that you've got the right items. So uh, for your weapon, you want this right here, this is the pig sticker. Uh, the reason why you want this is because you need a dagger because it attacks very very quickly. And then, of all the daggers you can pick, this is the best one that you can pick because it's got the 28% damage to beasts and 18% uh, damage to humans. But you know, as you can see, you can go up to 30% each. So it's just it's it's a lot of damage. Um, so you want this because it attacks fast and does it can do a lot of you know bonus damage. Um, now for the shield, uh, you actually do not want this shield. Um, I will actually show you the shield that you need. So you're going to want this shield here, Akarat's Awakening. And uh, the reason why you want this is because for every uh, time that you block, you get a 25% chance. So 1 in 4 blocks to reduce all of your cooldowns by 1 second. All right, and the reason why that's really important is because you will be using um, these right here. And they're not going to be up all the time, but if you can uh, reduce the cooldown for them, it's just going to increase your damage like ridiculously. Alright, so uh, let's go over the gear real quick again. Um, I am using the Unity Ring, and then uh, I've got one, and then my follower has one as well. And then uh, what happens is that the damage that you take is going to be split between you know the two of you, and so then I'm only it, I, it's basically a 50% damage reduction. And then I've also given her this focus here that makes her like not die ever, so it's like a permanent 50% damage reduction. Um, and then you've got the belt of the trove, and the reason why you want this and why you need this is because for your four set bonus, you take 50% less damage for 20 seconds after damaging an enemy uh, with bombardment. And since this uh, can be anywhere between six and eight seconds, um, you are always going to have that damage reduction. So that's an extra additional 50% damage reduction there. Um, let's see, uh, we're also going to want to use this set here, so the compass rose, and then it's a little partner guy here, the traveler's pledge, and then what this is going to do is when you're attacking, basically when you're standing still, or when you're attacking, you're going to be standing still. So this will give you an extra 100% damage on top of the damage that you're already doing. So very very important that you get that. Um, I haven't found one yet on my seasonal characters, so kind of can't really do anything about it. Um, uh, something else that I'm using that you know, it, it's a personal preference here, is I'm using the S of Johan. And the reason why I like this is because it has a chance to pull in all the enemies around you, like right around you. Um, it's technically towards your target, but since you're using a single target uh, attack, um, it's going to be pulling everyone directly around you. And the more people that are around you, the more you're going to be getting hit, the more you're going to be getting, uh, the more you're going to be blocking. And then if you look at the two set bonus here, each time you hit an enemy with punch slash or block an attack, your thorns damage is increased by 25% for two seconds. So what's going to happen is when you're fighting, you're going to get a little uh, debuff, or not a debuff, but a, a buff. And it's going to take and look like the Iron Maiden picture here, and it'll just kind of show up down there. And then it'll have a number, right? And that number for each one of those numbers, it's 25% increased thorns damage. So if you do, I think right now, my guy, if it has no buffs, it'll do like 150 million uh, thorns damage, like if I get hit. So each time that that increases like to 4, then that's 250 million. If it increases to 8, that's it, it's a lot. Um, so you want to be able to block and attack as quickly and as often as possible. And then what that's going to do is it's going to get your buff up um, as high as it can possibly go. Um, I've actually personally seen it go up to 30, and that's going to be 750% increased damage of your thorns, which has already increased thanks to your 6-set bonus by 600% um, to the first enemy hit. 
so it's it's just a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, let's see. So we covered that. Covered that. Um, let's see. So for your chest uh, plate here, you're gonna want one of two items. You're gonna want either the Heart of Iron or the Aquila Quirace. Now the Aquila Quirace. It just sounds so funny saying that Quirace. Um, I'm probably not even saying it right. Anyways. Uh, whenever you are above 90% primary resource, all of your damage is reduced by 50%. So you've got the 50% damage reduction from Unity. You've got the 50% damage reduction from this. You've got 50% damage reduction from the set bonuses and with bombardment here. So it's it's ridiculous amount of just damage reduction. Um, let's see. And then for this one, the Heart of Iron, um, this will increase your Thorns damage equal to 287% of your vitality. So that's just, it's free Thorns damage, so you absolutely need to have that. Um, let's see, and then as you increase or upgrade your items from Normal to Ancient, um, your Thorns damage is also going to increase, which is just going to increase your damage. And then, that's just your base Thorns damage. And then as you increase that, you know, by percentages, then it's, you're just going to be doing a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, Alright, so what they will suggest that you use in place of Unity is this Justice Lantern here. Um, this will give you a damage reduction equal to 55% of your block chance. And then uh, right now, my block chance is 68%. So as of right now, that would give me about a 30% damage reduction on top of the 50-50 and 50% that I'm getting from the other stuff. Um, now, if you do use this, um, you could put it in here and have it there and then you could like switch your unity and your justice lantern and that, that's just going to give you a lot of justice, uh, damage reduction. Um, that's going to be more important as you get higher up in the um, greater rift levels. Uh, let's see, the gem here, the museum here is going to be your cooldown reduction. Um, that's going to get you these things reduced. Um, you want to use the max gem here. Um, and then for your other gems you also want to max them out but as you can see I don't have them. I just have this one gem right here maxed out. Um, because you have so much damage reduction, you're not really going to need too much in the way of resistance, but it's still good to have at least a little bit. So uh, I would suggest putting, um, you know, your highest gems here, uh, diamond gems in here, just your pants. So you'll have two gems, and then um, fill up your chest with uh, rubies. All right. Uh, let's see. So the legendary gems you're going to be using. Our Bane of the Stricken. Now, as you can see, mine's only level six. Um, still working on that. Um, and then uh, the reason why you want this is because with the way that you're attacking, um, you're going to be attacking a lot, but you're not going to be doing like 10 billion damage or anything. It's going to be uh, like hundreds of millions of damage. And then in you know tier 10 or torment 10, whatever you want to call it, um, people are going to be having anywhere between. 700 million and like 8 billion. So each time that you hit, it's going to give you an extra um, percent damage. And then that's just going to increase. Now, once you get this up to uh, level 25 or rank 25, then you're going to be doing the extra 25% against bosses and rip guardians, which is going to help you out. But um, right now, with what I've got, depending on the rift guardian that I get, I can knock him out in, well, pretty, pretty quickly. So that's not necessarily required right now with the greater rifts that I'm doing, but later on you will need that. Um, I'm also using Boyarsky's chip. This is an obvious given for uh, this particular build. Uh, mine's currently ranked 42. I've been working on getting this one up uh, as high as it'll go. I think it only goes up to 50. Um, so this just basically gives you thorns and then it also taunts the first enemy that you hit. And then I think there is something somewhere to where if you've got a guy that's taunted or something, it'll increase the damage, uh, thorns damage that you do. I'm not sure where that is, though. I think it's there. I don't know. Um, and then also over here, you're going to be using Bane of the Trapped. Now, this is just going to be increasing your damage all around by a certain percentage. Um, and then after level 25, it's it's self-proccing, so it'll, just wearing this gem will give you the increased damage. Uh, so that, on top of all of your other bonuses with your uh, Invoker buff, um, it's just going to increase your damage a lot. So you want that as well. Um, Alright. Uh, for your item here, uh, you're going to want Blood Brother. Um, this will get you a extra 20% chance to block attacks. 
And then not only will it give you damage reduction for those attacks, but it'll also make your next damage or your next attack do 30% additional damage. So with the buff and uh, you know Bane of the Trapped, and now this, it's just it's a lot of damage increase. Um, all right, so uh, let's go over Paragon points real quick. Um, for your first one, you're going to want to max out your movement speed, um, and then everything else you want to go into strength. Uh, for offense, you're going to want your attack speed up first, and then your cooldown reduction, because as you are able to use these more often, you'll be able to do more damage. Um, so that's kind of a given. And then after that, critical hit chance and critical hit damage. So you just follow these in order. For defense, you're going to want your resist all up immediately, all the way. And then uh, your armor after that, and then either life or life regeneration, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. And then for your utility, you're going to want your area damage up first, and then your life on hit. And then resource cost reduction, you aren't going to be using enough resource for this to even matter. And then gold find, I mean, this build doesn't require gold. Um, I know that a lot of, like, the tier 10 builds, they use uh, gold wrap and Bane of the Hoarder uh, legendary gem, and that gives you a lot of armor, but the only re the only way that that will work is if there's gold, and Great Rifts don't drop gold, so it kind of isn't all that useful. Alright, so I think I've covered everything. Um, so yeah, you're going to want this set. Uh, this ring here is kind of up in the air. You can use what you want, depending on your personal preference. I like Unity, but uh, that's up to you. Um, okay. So, let's see. Uh, we are going to do a Greater Rift. Um, we're going to be doing Greater Rift 50. So, Greater Rift 50. Um, and I'm also going to empower it, I think, too. Which is, ooh, 49 million? That's ridiculous. Alright, uh, so, um, as you can see with my gear, it's kind of kind of mostly crappy. I mean, I've got the right gear, but it's not the best gear. Um, I've only got two ancient items. Everything else is just normal stuff. My gems aren't maxed out, you know. Uh, I don't have the proper roles for these things, like my bracers here, they're giving holy skills damage when it should be physical skills. Thorns is a physical damage. Um, so, I mean, my gear is, it's it's not the best. And yet, I'm still going to own this rift. Now, the thing about the invoker build is this is not a speed build, alright? It is built for survival and for maximizing the damage that you can put out. It's not very fast, but you will be able to do these Greater Rifts and Torment 10 with no problem. And, you know, as you saw with my gear, it's still kind of crappy. Alright, so now, uh, I'll go over the moves after. I probably should have done that before, but, alright. So, let's see. So as you can see from the damage, I'm doing uh, 395 million for, uh, let's see, if, I don't know, it's, it's really fast. Um, but, you know, my life isn't going down too much. I mean, I'm standing right in this green crap, and I'm still staying alive. So the damage reduction that you're getting just from this build is pretty impressive. And then this right here, this Thorns of the Invoker buff, um, that is what I was talking about. You want that to get up as high as possible and stay as high as possible for as long as possible. Because for every four, that's an extra 100% thorns damage that you're doing. Um, right there was my mobility thing. I'm using a Steed Charge with Endurance. And that just basically allows you to mount a horse and travel really, really fast for... Uh, uh, I don't know, it's like two or three seconds. And then with uh, Endurance, you get an extra three seconds of travel time on top of that. Um, the main skill that I'm using here, or main attack that I'm using, is going to be this Punish with Celerity. Um, let me get some more guys here. There we go. Alright. So now with this, um, sorry about that. Okay, so we're using Hardened Senses. And then what that's going to do is it's going to increase your block chance as you're using this. Frozen stuff. Alright. Now, I just stood in that explosive blast and I didn't die. So, damage reduction. You definitely need it. Alright, now this frozen stuff, if you are not currently in Akarat's champion, it will freeze you. And then if you're frozen and you're not doing uh, damage or you're not blocking, then not only are you going to be taking more damage, but you're also going to be doing less damage uh, with your thorns. Um, because 
If you're frozen, you can still actually do the thorns. It's just that uh, you can't block. And because you're not getting that uh, invoker buff up, um, it's not actually going to be doing all that much damage. So if you can avoid getting frozen, you want to try to do that as often as possible. Um, so if you start seeing you know little frozen pools showing up or whatever, um, you can use your Steed Charge to get out of it. Or you can just pop your Akron's Champion and that will make you immune to it. And then it looks like I need to hurry up. Alright. Now, as you can see, my Invoker buff is up about 7, 8-ish. Um, so that's an extra 175 to 200% increased Thorns damage. Alright, now when you're using the Steed Charge, um, you don't want to just go and go up to the very first people that you see. You kind of want to go past them because uh, the people that you pass are going to follow you and then you can attack the people that you stopped at and you'll get more people coming after you um, as they catch up. Alright, I need to speed up here. Alright, now usually when I get those uh, yellow guys, the champions, um, I'll usually uh, go ahead and hit Akrat's champion. Now I'm also using Prophet here, and then uh, what that's going to do is it'll give you uh, additional what is it, uh, armor while it's on. And then um, also the first time if you die, uh, every minute it will revive you for free. So if you're doing a really high you know, greater rift and you're not really sure if you can you know, handle it, and you get really, really, really unlucky and you happen to die, it's not actually going to invoke the cooldown for the Greater Rift because, you know, you died. So it's useful to have that. Um, I'm also using uh, Consecration right here. Uh, and we're using Bed of Nails. And so what this is going to do is it'll do Consecration, which is going to give you uh, heals. Um, but then it, Bed of Nails is also going to say, uh, have all of the enemies that are currently in there too. Um, they will take thorns damage every second. So now this is also based off of your little thorns buff, or your invoker buff, I should say. So as you're doing more damage, or as it goes up, then when you have Consecration up, then you'll do more damage with that as well. We are slowly getting ahead of the curve. All right. I'm also using uh, Iron Skin with Reflective Skin. Um, Iron Skin itself is just a defensive spell that increases your armor. But reflective, uh, reflective skin is gonna have any uh, enemies that hit you while it's active take extra thorns damage. So on top of having the bonus from the invoker buff and the hardened senses, you know, buff on top of that, um, with iron skin you're also gonna be uh, dealing even more damage on top of that. So it's just it's just a way to get your damage up a lot higher, which is what you're gonna need. Um, as you can see with these guys, they've got like one, one and a half billion health, and I'm doing, I don't know, 396 million. So that's why you need the attack speed to be really well, really high up there too. Uh, looks like I'm lagging a little bit. Alright, that's alright. Okay, that is a lot of guys. Alright, so my invoker buff got up to 18, I think. So that's going to be 450% increased damage, or thorns damage, I should say, so... As you saw, it it makes a difference. Whereas if you're doing just like little onesies and twosies, like you're doing, like I'm doing right now, it's it's not that high. It's like five six. I mean, it's still better than zero, but all right. Let's see who else. All right, these guys. Now, this is something that I want to cover with fire chains. They are your friend because you can block that damage, and so as you're blocking that damage, what's going to happen? is uh, your invoker buff is going to go up pretty high most of the time. Looks like it's not doing it this time. 12, 13, 14. I don't know. 15, 16, I think. So that's like an extra 400% damage. Um, so also with those uh, winged guys that breathe the fire at you, they're your friends too. Because all the damage that they do is blockable. And uh, also it's very, very fast damage. So your invoker buff will go up a lot. Um, I think when I had my invoker buff get up to like 30, I think I had like four or five of those guys all breathing fire on me. 
And then um, with all of my damage reduction, you know, I was able to survive it, no problem. All right, looks like we need to speed up a little more. Steve Charge. Right. Open the door. Thank you. Okay. Now, did you see how I just grabbed everyone in here and kind of like put them like all around me? That's the S of Johan. Or Johan, however you say it. Uh, no, don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Go away. Okay. So, if you ever get to the point where you're going to die, just hit your Steve Charge. And then what that will do is it pretty much makes you immune to, uh, oh, it lets you walk through things. Dude, why are you taking so much damage? What are you doing? Alright, so I just uh, hit my Akarat's Champion, so that'll increase my resistances, uh, my armor, and all that other good stuff, so I should be good after that. Um, so yeah, uh, when you get onto a point where like you're taking a lot of damage like that, you've got three options. One, run away. If you can't run away, hit your Steed Charge. And then if your C charge is on cooldown and you can't use it, then just pop uh, Akrat's Champion. If you don't have any of those available, uh, hope that your potion is not on cooldown, because otherwise you will die. But the good news is that if you have Akrat's Champion on and you still die, then you're going to be revived for free. Alright. Alright, what do we got next? Hey, what's this? Speed. Good. All right, I'm at uh, 12 frames, so uh, this is kind of kind of hurting to be recording and playing at the same time. Why is that a dead end? All right, what do we got? All right. Oh, and uh, people that throw stuff at you or shoot you with things are also your friend because you can block those and then as you block it gets that uh, invoker buff up. And basically like this entire build is about that invoker buff. Um, when you're thinking about gear or you know stats on gear that you've got, if like you wanna if you're thinking about replacing something with something else, um, you wanna definitely keep in mind that invoker buff because that is what your high damage is based upon. So you're gonna want High speed, or you're going to want high block. So attack speed block. I'm barely staying ahead of the thing here. It's terrible. You're not dead yet? What are you doing? Oh, and even with all the damage reduction, if you get one of those uh, arcane things popped on top of your head, it's gonna hurt. So if you can get away from that, then definitely do that. Um, but other than that, I mean, poison, fire, uh, doesn't really hurt you too much, it's not gonna kill you. Um, freezing, the only way that that's gonna kill you, it's not from the damage itself, it's because you're not attacking or blocking. And uh, because, you know, you've got your hardened senses here, which increases your block chance. Um, you're going to be taking more damage if you get frozen, which could potentially kill you. So, frozen stuff you got to watch out for. Arcane you definitely have to watch out for, but everything else you don't really have to worry about too much. Alright. And then, uh, as you can see, every time that I get you know, a group of guys around me, a uh, group of enemies, I should say, um, I always hit these three here. Um, laws of Justice and Decaying Strength is the other one that I use, and that just is uh, damage reduction. Um, the way that that works is it gives you uh, increased armor, I believe, or just reduces the damage that you take. And then also with Decaying Strength, um, for all of the enemies that are around you, they will do less damage. Um, so that just, it's kind of like, it still reduces damage, but it kind of like goes about it in like an opposite sort of way. 
So um, my one key over there that's going to be uh, strictly dem introduction. My two key is going to be uh, increase. Well, it's dem introduction and increasing thorn, thorns damage. And then my number three key is going to be uh, healing, and then also an AOE thorns. And then uh, number four is just the shit hits the fan, and you know <laughs> you kind of need a little bit more power, or more speed, or more resistance. That's when you use that. All right. Wow, I'm at nine frames per second. That's pretty crazy. Oh, and these guys are frozen guys. That's a shame. Right, kill them quickly. All right. All right. Now, usually I will finish this a lot faster than I am right now. Um, I've been kind of taking it slow so that I can explain things as I go. But usually the timer might be like halfway by the time that I complete it. And then once again, this is with you know crappy gear with crappy rolls. Uh, so this is definitely good for those of you who are not like completely end game you know equipment, end game paragon levels and stuff like that. So I feel like I mean I started doing tier ten when I was paragon level two hundred six. Uh, sorry, two hundred forty something. So you definitely don't even need to be at paragon level three hundred in order to do this. You just need to have the right gear. And then once you have that, then it's easy. Alright, good. Now for this guy. Uh, this guy's annoying. But uh, I should be able to kill him in time, so. So, just kind of waiting for my uh, 1, 2, and 3 to uh, come back. And they all take about the same amount of time. So, whenever you, as long as you're using them at the same time, they'll all get done at the same time, too. So. And that just kind of increases your damage. Um, time remaining 35 seconds. Oh my gosh. Okay, but I got it. It's all good. Alright, so we have a lot of stuff. Okay, now, this is. Uh, Level 50, you get 277 blood shards, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of uh, legendaries or set items. So that is definitely worth getting up there. Um, if you're trying to uh, get stuff for other people, or if you're just trying to get blood shards, um, or if you're just trying to level up your, le your legendary gems, um, doing a Crusader Invoker Thorns build is it's a great way to get yourself started. All right, now I'm going to see if, ooh, 80%. I don't like that. Let's see. And I did, I did, yeah, I did, okay. So we will see if I can get this going. There's one, there's two. Oh, oh I got two out of the four. Oh, well. So I'm up to 51,200 thorns. If we look down here, that's 207,000. Um, yeah. So uh, let's head back to town and see what we got. Wow. That FPS rate is pretty shitty. I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Alright, so... So yeah, I was like right there and doing a level 50 at 321 or 320 Paragon. Got me almost an entire bar of experience. And then total, I got five levels during that one thing. So if you're looking to upgrade your Paragon levels as well, um, once again, Crusader, Invoker, Thorns. All right, so let's just assign these guys real quick. Um, let's see, when I was 240-something uh, Paragon, um, I think I was doing uh, Greater Rift level 44. 243, something like that. And then as I sort of came to understand, you know, the buff and how it works and what you need to make it make it work, that's when I was able to slowly go up um, in the greater rift levels. So what do we got? Flail of the charge. I already got one of those. Uh, wizard, okay. Alright, so this is uh, one of the items that you'll need. This one, eh, it's not that great. And then we also got Roland's Bearing. What is this? And a puzzle ring. 
All right, so something cool about the puzzle ring is if you take and you take just the puzzle ring and you put it into this Kanai's cube um, just by itself, just like that, and you hit transmute, it'll actually open up a portal to uh, the treasure goblin place thing. And so if you ever find a puzzle ring, um, <laughs> definitely do that. All right, and then what else did I get? Flavor of time. Um, this is nice too because it has movement speed on an amulet, but for this particular build you don't really need that. Alright, so, uh, there it is, that is, oh, and I suppose I can go over the stuff real quick. Okay, so just to go over this, uh, your primary skill, Punish, um, it's going to increase your chance to block for a short time. Uh, Celerity is going to increase your attack speed as well. So, once again, with that buff, you want your attack speed to be up as much as possible. So that's why you want this one. Um, this is for your mobility. Um, you can, if you want, another thing that you can do if you're not really so interested in mobility is you can take and make this slash and then, um, let's see, what is it? Okay, if you put slash and zeal on here, um, it'll increase your attack speed. So, like, the more guys you hit, the, more, the faster you'll actually attack. But then if you are going to use this, then you absolutely need to have your second one here be, um, where is it? Uh, go back. You definitely don't want this one to be Punish with Celerity. Um, and that's because you need that buff from Punish. Like, absolutely, this build does not work without it. Um, so you can go with either Mobility or you can uh, change things around and use Slash instead to get you uh, increased speed. Um, just keep in mind that you're going to be losing that, that mobility and for the greater rifts when you've got like a long expanse of just, it's just dry, there's not really too many guys there. Um, you're definitely going to want the, the mobility, but I mean, if, if you think that you're going to be okay without it, then you can definitely go with the slash. Um, so Steed Charge. Um, with endurance, it increases the duration to three seconds. So it must have been like one or two seconds before, and now with this, it goes up to three. So it just allows you to travel a faster, uh, farther distance. Um, we're going to be using, for the number one key, you're going to be using Laws of Justice. And then this is going to be uh, reducing the damage that you take. And then with Decaying Strength, it reduces the damage that the enemies around you do. So it also uh, reduces damage. Um, let's see. Iron Skin with reflective skin so this is going to once again give you damage reduction and then it's also going to increase your thorns damage for anyone that hits you um, and then yeah so it says attackers take extra thorns damage so only if they're hitting you will this actually increase the damage you don't need to see that go away All right. and then for your number three skill you're using consecration um, this just makes uh, an open area where you can heal yourself if you have a bed of nails, it becomes an AoE thorns attack. So you definitely want this as well because this increases as that invoker buff increases. Um, and then Akarath's Champion. Um, this increases your, your damage, wrath regeneration. It also makes you immune to things like knockback, freeze. Um, it increases your resistances. So um, all around, like if you ever get into a bind or if you just want to do more damage, you definitely want to have that. And then having Profit on here. Um, it gives you additional armor, and it gives you the chance to uh, res for free the first time that you die. And it's just a cooldown, I think. Well, every time that you activate this, um, you're, you're allowed to die once. Um, Alright, so, and then we're using uh, Fervor. So I'm using the pig sticker, as you saw, that's a one-handed dagger. So you want to use Fervor. Increases your attack speed and reduces the cooldowns by 15%. Um, Iron Maiden, obviously, to increase your thorns damage. Um, Findery, you want because strength uh, not only determines um, how much thorns damage that you do, but it also increases your armor. So you want as much strength as possible. And then hold your ground. All this is doing is it uh, increases your block chance. Um, and it's actually, it helps that you can no longer dodge too, because if you dodge, you're not doing thorns damage. So if you can't dodge and you can only block or get hit, then you're doing thorns damage either way. Um, so this increases your block chance and uh, yeah, by 30%. And then uh, with the finery, that's 1.5% per gem. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 gems. So that's an extra 10.5% strength. 
Um, so as you can see, uh, increases damage and then uh, also increases armor. And then uh, because of patch 2.4, um, this is actually going to increase your thorn damage by 80, well, for mine particularly, by 85.89%. Um, so I think my thorn damage is like 100,000 with this, and that's just base damage. But then because of, well, and actually this increases it too, so it's probably a lot less than that. So I don't know, I've probably got maybe 100,000 thorns. Um, all together, and then because it's being increased here, and then also being increased uh, here. Um, okay, so with this, just to actually give you some real numbers, um, see this 300%, okay, so if your vitality is, you know, like mine is 5,500, and you got a 300%, that'll give you an extra 15, uh, sorry, 16,500 thorns damage on top of what you've already got. So, I mean, it's not, like, as amazing as, you know, this gem here or Boyarsky's um, chip, but any increase in Thorns damage will increase the damage output that you do, so you definitely want that. Alright, so I think I've covered everything. Um, as you can see with the uh, extra damage resistances, all of my resistances are well over 100%, um, and then also melee damage reduction has increased as well. Um, so yeah, and then also you notice that my damage here is very, very low, and that's because Thorns, and particularly the, the Invoker set, doesn't base anything off of weapon damage, like, not at all. Um, it's based strictly off of Thorns damage, so this could be one, and you would still be doing, like, hundreds of millions of damage. Um, and then, uh, also, anytime that you can get the, these upgraded to Ancient, you want to make sure that there's thorns on every single piece. So 2400, 5700, 2500, uh, 7200, so that's that's really good. Uh, 2700, this I don't think has any, but 2500, 2800, um, this has a lot too, 8700. Um, so as you increase, um, like from regular to ancient, you'll be able to put on a lot more thorns damage, which is just going to increase your overall damage by a lot. So if you can upgrade, you definitely want to do that. And then uh, get this set going, get this full set going. Uh, you want Akkarth's Champion here, not the Lidless Hall. Um, but if you don't have one, then just get something that has a lot of thorns damage and increases your physical skills if you can. Um, for this, you want this to buff physical skills as well. Thorns is a physical skill. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of it. All right. So there you go. That is my uh, little short video for an Invoker Thorns Crusader. And I hope you enjoyed the video. This is my very first D3 video. And I uh, hope you guys like it. I hope you found it informative. I hope it wasn't too boring. And, uh, yeah, see you.